there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Word to your mother. I never gotten the teas. I was always a coffee guy. Mm -hmm. You seem bummed, mommy. Just here to listen and learn, apparently. You've been reading the feedback, huh? <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Two Cool Moms. I'm Joe Gatto. <laughs> hey, I'm Steve Burton. And uh, thank you for joining us. We are super excited to be here to help you, the listener. That's right. That's right. That's, that's what we do here. We are two cool moms here to be as cool as possible. But... We're here to be honest, too. We're here to be honest. <laughs> Very much. We're not going to lie to you. What was, uh, as you were growing up, what was your mom known for? Uh, beating the shit out of me no, with a no, no, wooden I mean, spoon. <laughs> amongst um, your friends. like Amongst my friends. Like your mom. Like did, Was your mom like one that was involved with your friends? Like when you came over, they'd be like, hi, Mrs. Byrne. Uh, did they call her Mrs. Byrne? Yeah, Mrs. Byrne. But my, my mom's super sweet. She's she's tiny. Right. She's sweet. Um <laughs> I, I just remember this, you know, I, I was, you know, you, you I, I was playing hockey in Pittsburgh all the time. So we finished a game and there was a kid that called me something like chink or whatever. And uh, I was like, ah, oh, you know, and, and I was, I, I was, I think ninth or 10th grade or whatever. Now, granted in, in high school, I was on the smaller end. Mm -hmm. I didn't bloom until like my junior, senior year. So I was very tiny, mm -hmm. but I was really, you know, good for Pittsburgh right, right. In, in terms of hockey. So the game finishes, I walk outside, the kid's there, and he and I had words, and I just remember we started fighting, and my mom- This is after the game. This, this is, is after the game. My mom jumped in and started hitting him. No way! <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Yeah, so, so my mom was kinda known for that for a minute, cause she was like screaming, Steven, Steven. <laughs> and she's yelling my name, but hitting the kid. <laughs> So it was like, what, what's going on? And then years later, I was in college at Kent State, and I came home for the summer uh, to, to visit my folks or something. And my dad still plays hockey at 75. But um, back then, he was in an, an, a competitive adult league, so I geared up. I would skate with him in the summer, and I was the first play on the ice. I got the puck, and I'm at the boards, and this kid drills me into the boards and starts wailing on me. Now I got a helmet on, I'm yeah. fully, you know, and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? Like I just got here and this kid's like hitting me and stuff. He goes, you know who I am? You know who the fuck I am? I'm like, no, he's like, we fought when you played for Hampton. I was like, wait, my mom beat you up? Like, is that, and it was the kid. It was the kid, he had been holding on to this for wow. so many years, literally the first shift. I had no idea. I, I, I wouldn't even know what the person looks, that looks like. like. That's unbelievable. I wouldn't know his name. I had well, no he clue. He was probably ridiculed by getting beat by somebody else's mother for relentlessly in his friend group, right? He, yeah, because you weren't so, friends yeah. with them, right? They were a different no team. Clue. No clue, right? So he goes, he think about that kid's existence. And the next day in high school, it's like, hey, you got beat up <laughs> by somebody's small Asian mother. <laughs> <laughs> you got beat by short rounds, mommy. Right? Yeah. Look yeah. at that. I oh. mean, it was it was wild. So my mom was kind of known for that for a bit, but she was always my parents were like the cool parents, I guess. You know, my mother, How about you? my mother scored a mafia boss. Excuse me. <laughs> so my mom, <laughs> she's part of the Amados, right? It's four of them. There's the the my mom is the youngest, and she has two older brothers, Vinny and Nino, and an uh, older sister, Roxanne. But and when you said mother. the Amados, I thought is this a motorcycle gang? Or? <laughs> That's the four of them. But they're okay. known as the Amados. The four of them. They lived in uh, on uh, Stool Avenue and Avenue T in Brooklyn. My okay. grandmother it was like that neighborhood that you've seen in all the movies. The, all the mothers lean out the right, window. Right, right, yeah. That whole Bronx Taley kind of vibe, right? Everybody's watching each other's kids. Why is it Italian families know? You got to tell me the street you lived on. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> my my mom grew up in a hut, like literally a hut. It's That's like oh, the dirty hut. We get to break. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would too if you, got, you got street names. You got street names. That's right. right. So they were there. Um, my uncle got into a little bit of a, a scuffle with this guy, uh, Ali. They call him Ali Boy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, <laughs> he gets beat up. And my mom is four years old, five years old. And she goes up to my literally four, four years, years old? old, five years old. She goes up to uh, she goes up to a uh, the kid is young here. He's my uncle's age, so okay. my uncle's about five or six years older than the right. So let's say the kid's 11, 12 years old. My mom goes upstairs to my grandfather's toolbox and gets a ball peen hammer, 
at five at years five old. Five years old comes downstairs, puts it behind her back. At five years yes, old, she's she puts leaning, it behind her back. back, and she's leaning. And she goes, "Alley boy, alley boy, come here." And he, he's like, "No, I'm not going to come there. You're going to hit me." He's like, "I won't hit you. Come here. I got to tell you a secret." And the kid comes over, and my mom takes the bullpen hanger, bang, nails him no right on the head. No way. Are you kidding me? Fast forward. Okay, I'm going to fast forward about fifty years. Right, ish. Yeah. My mom is at the Bistro, which is an Italian restaurant in where the, all the old like widows and widowers okay, this went. This story's going one of two ways. <laughs> <laughs> one, one or two widowers. Yeah. Right, you know, where all the widowers hang out and they have right. like a DJ and whatnot. So they're eating at the Bistro and you go to dinner first. My mom's in the corner with her friend Lynn. They're having dinner. Yeah. And the waiter comes over and he goes, Excuse me. He's like, uh, You know, that table would like to buy you a drink over there. And they buy you a drink. My mom's, Thank you. She gets a whole white Zinfandel. And then a guy comes over and he's like, uh, Are you uh, Jerry Amato? And my mom, my mom goes, no, I'm Geraldine Gatto, but I was and Jerry Amato. He goes, um, that's from my friend Al. And my mom looks over, and it's a guy in no the corner. Way. With all this, he was like a half a mobster in Staten Island. Holy and he's with all the guys, and he goes, that's my friend Al. And my mom goes over to say hello to him. And she goes, he goes, you remember me? And he lifts up his hair, and he has a little no neck. Way. And she goes, I'm Alley Boy. And she goes... Oh, she's like, hi, how oh, are you? Shit. And he goes, uh, he goes, I'll tell you, still got the best hit on me ever. That's what he said to her. Yeah. Really? And they talked for a minute or two, and that was it. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Man, that is a crazy. So our mother, story. both crazy, violent people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they're bringing this it must all. Must be why we get along. Holy cow, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. So your mom? Yeah, he, came, he grew up to be like a. He ran a crew in Brooklyn, and whatnot. He was in Staten Island for dinner. Isn't that crazy? Holy shit. That's like one of those rich New York stories. You always kind of hear right. it, but hearsay right. or whatever. But that really happened. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, it seemed like, like at least like the generation, like my father, your mother grew up in, in New York City. It was a much different city then. It was much more neighborhood. For sure. It was much more where everybody knew each everybody other. Everybody watches each other's kids, right? There's always That's why kids got less trouble. Everybody's watching the kid. Everybody Somebody, somebody's mom kids. is watching. Somebody would get yep. cracked. Yep. My father was telling me he used to, you know, my my... My kids are 10 and 6, and, you know, my wife's nervous to let them go to the other side of the grocery store by right. themselves. But my dad took, I think, two trains and a bus to get to his school crazy, right? at 6 years old Nuts in New York City. But that's what kids did that's then, it. right? Yeah. But I think everybody, the world was smaller, the, the city was smaller, but I think they were all neighborhoods, and they all looked out for each other, right? Yeah. What was the street name you grew up on? Hidden Pond Drive. Hidden Pond Drive. Me in yeah. Pittsburgh? Yeah. Hidden, Hidden Pond, Pond Drive. Drive, yeah. Mine was Harbor Road. Harbor? Harbor. Okay, we're, we're both near some water. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're aquatic. Here's some water. <laughs> yes, good sir. <laughs> Two captains, seafaring uh, captains. Yeah. Um, no, we had we literally had a pond in in the woods, kind of in the back, and in the winter it would freeze over. We'd go play ice hockey. Ah, there. that's why you're. Here. We'd go play ice hockey, and one of my buddies fell in. But in the summer, then we would go fishing in that, and we would also do this thing called ponding, where we got inflatable rafts. And we would get like beers and pretend Jason Voorhees was chasing us, <laughs> and we'd yell, we'd yell at Jason Voorhees like taunting him like, "Fuck you, Voorhees, come get us!" <laughs> like just dumb kid yeah. shit. But we called it ponding, and so ponding, ponding. You verbed it, nice. Then we, then other kids from other townships heard about ponding. No way. So they would come, come? pond with us, and then we started making our own jerseys, like ponding jerseys. It was pretty cool. It, it kind of took off for a while. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Russell Philpot and David Newman were my two ponding high school pals. buddies. That's they were ponding pals, and we just, you just get kind of like a little slosh, <laughs> go in a pond, pals. yell it like Jason Voorhees, <laughs> and I don't know. There was no sport, but we had jerseys and everything. We used weird. to go into. The, we had woods by us because so, Staten Island had a lot of woods, and yeah. we used to do a thing called one pumps. Did you ever play one pumps? I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> so Jason Voorhees would stab you. No, uh, it, it was uh, we used to have BB guns and you pump them oh, once and shoot yeah. each other. You only could pump once. Yeah, that was the rule. You could only pump once. But there was one kid in the neighborhood we didn't like. We would always pump a little bit more, and he got <laughs> caught. And he got caught with a BB and it got embedded in his rib. He had to go to the hospital. Oh no shit! Are yeah. you serious? Yeah, we had BB gun wars, but we we made sure to put on uh, protective eyewear. Yeah. Eyewear, and then everywhere everybody wore camo, but. The deal yeah, that's was, that's you... some hidden pond shit right there. Harbor Road, no. We we're looking at each other in the face, yelling, "You want more?" <laughs> <laughs> I do remember one kid. I think his name was Matt Kirshner. He got he got caught up, and we just fucking unloaded oh, on him. Yeah. And I I remember I was shooting and crying, <laughs> laughing. I was laughing so hard because your friend's in pain, but it's like I'm not gonna kill him. So it's like ping ping ping. Yeah, <laughs> it was I great. never I've never gone paintballing. Have you? Paintball, I did one time. Yeah, yeah. I did. I one used time. to. Uh, did you? You grew up in the generation too with laser tag or photon. Oh yeah. Did you have? What do you think I got? I had photon. 
You had, oh, too, I had baby. Photon yeah, too, yeah, baby. Yeah, which, yeah. I got Photon That's and right. everybody else got laser, laser tag. tag and they didn't, so it's just me and my brother. <laughs> and they didn't work together. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work. He had the he had the green helmet. I had the red helmet. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Photon. photon was awful, oh, bulky, bulky, didn't so fit. Stupid. Laser tag was sleek and cool. They had cool commercials. So much lighter. Yeah, like, the photon bag. I felt like a Navy SEAL going into battle. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was so heavy. Yeah, it just sucked because nobody else had it. Yeah, laser tag. I remember where I was on the road with the boys. And we were in a nothing town, and like we like just to do stuff sometimes. So yeah. it'd be like top three, like escape room, bowling alley, sure. or laser tag facility. And we found a laser tag facility that was in the shape of an Egyptian hut. And we decided to play everybody. So the four Wait, of you us versus everybody us else. For, so the four of us go in. Everybody, you know, is no, you know, they know us, whatever. So it's a big. And there was like a group that wanted to be on our team, whatever. And then there was like a group of people that didn't know us, that were like professional, like players. Oh, so we're real. we're all messing around, like having fun or whatever. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm like messing around with like shooting each other, whatever. But it was a bunch of kids, right? So I took one, I took one kid hostage. <laughs> So Sal, I literally put him in a bear hug and held him as Q and Sal just kept shooting him <laughs> to run our score up. But the kid didn't know us. Right. So we were just some four adults. <laughs> uh, some dude just like oh, dude, three Amber Alerts are right, holding play, me. Playing playing in the lace day. Everybody, when we leave, everybody's taking pictures, whatever, and I see yeah. the kid being like, oh, they cheated. Like he's yelling at <laughs> He us. doesn't give a shit. I, yeah. kept, I kept saying. Yeah. You want more? Keep your mouth shut, kid. <laughs> Not knowing he didn't know who we were. He had no clue. So huh? at the end, we were like, we're like, oh, thanks, man. We take a picture of him. I'm like, you want a picture? He's like, who are you? I'm like, you don't know who we are? Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm just a weird uncle <laughs> that was holding you against your will. I felt right. so bad. But I guarantee oh, now that he's kid that went story. home. He yeah. YouTubed. He went down the rabbit hole. Now he's probably one sure. of the biggest fans. For sure. He's telling that story with pride now, I bet. <laughs> Dude, one of the... You got to do. Have you done whirly ball in Chicago? You just told me about this when we were. Uh, I got to take you back. The greatest, the funnest time you'll ever have. One of them. So I mean, it's, whirly ball is. Whirly ball is a basketball court mm -hmm. with a magnetized floor. There are five bumper cars on each side. The net is not. It's not a hoop. It's a net. So okay. it's vertical. Got it. So it's a, a cutout net. Yep. You get like these lacrosse sticks. You can hold in one hand. Track ball. Yep. And you get the trackball. Oh, like highlight, highlight exactly. Um, and you and you get in your teams, and you get you, in the cars. You get in bumper cars. So it's like polo, and you drill each other in these bumper cars while having these things passing it to each other, trying to go up court and hit the net. And there's how a bar high is there. the net? How there's high is the net? It's a normal basketball net. But so it's we're, vertical. We're, Got it. Yeah, it's so it's vertical. like you throw yeah. like a football so toss, like, at a, like, that. like in a carnival, like yeah. a football toss, like it's exactly. a cutout. Okay. And you got to use your things to do it. And so we used to, when I lived in Chicago, a group of us used to go. We would get you'd, you'd have a few drinks. I mean, you'd have the thing in your hand. I friends would come from out of town, be like, "Oh, I got to try this. Come, I beg, you got to come with us. Come with us." It gets violent because we had like friends that are on the Chicago Blackhawks playing with us, <laughs> and they take the thing and like zip it at you, so you, you're getting drilled with like people's rackets uh. and stuff. My one friend cut his nipple. What? I don't know how. I've never heard of anybody cutting their nipple, but he his nipple got cut, and I saw him recently. He's like, I have a scar on my nipple. What? What? He's like, he's like Alley Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you remember me? Nobody cut me like you, yeah, right. Dirk. <laughs> what is the what? Is, what is the ball? Is it a wiffle ball? Uh, it's like a hard plastic. But it's hard, so you get hit with it, it hurts. It, I mean, it's it's not going to kill you, but it would it would hurt. Yeah. Is it like not... when you're a little, you're teaching your little kid how to play baseball, and you get the fat red bat, and it's got that white ball? Exactly. That comes with it? That's, That's what the it ball. Is? Okay. Yeah. And okay. that we fun. would we would play best out of seven. The staff got to know us, and they would let us play. No and way. one time we played till four in the morning. And my honeymoon, I was leaving for my honeymoon flight at six, and I. I barely got home to the car service that was picking us up. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, you, you're gonna miss your honeymoon? Cause, uh, and I was like, look, we won. So, I don't know. it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I was at the ER, my friend cut his nipple. <laughs> Uh, all, right, all right, let's get to this. Let's get into it. Thanks so much for all our fans who write in so we can help you with your problems. Clearly, we have it all together. This one, look, I know we're coming out of the gates a little hot on this one, okay? But it does sound like she needs help. And oh, that's what we're here for. All right, Katie 
Okay, so a little backstory. I don't have a great relationship with my family due to abuse and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm the only sibling with their shit together. And I've worked my ass off to get to this point. My parents are elderly, and, and I feel impending doom about when they can't care for themselves. I just know their care is going to fall on me because I'm the only sibling that has financial security. But the thing is, I didn't work this hard to go bankrupt for abusive parents. And I know their care would impact my mental health because... My uh, probably probably and probably my marriage because my husband despises my family for the things they've done. But also, who's going to care for them? It feels like I'm obligated or I'm a shit person. Not sure what I should do to quell the anxiety. Please help. This is uh, very multi-layered. Let him rot. Oh, come on. <laughs> Imagine that's my stance. I'm like, next question. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, that is very, very, a lot of layers, a lot of things. In. I really respect the fact that Katie yep. grew up uh, under not the greatest of circumstances. I made something of herself. Too. Got herself in a great position. Sounds like she's in a great relationship, which is one of the harder things to do. Because mm -hmm. um, if you're coming from that, the chances of you having a healthy relationship are not as good, but she, she now has a great relationship. It sounds like she's got financial stability. She sounds like she's got a great job. And her siblings, other brothers and sisters, I think fell into the trap of Victims everything of that, that, yeah. that, that she, she stayed away from, so that's good. The problem is, is that there's gotta be some sense of resentment, of course, and I wonder how the relationship is with the parents present day. It sounds like it's, it's okay. It's kind of just existing, yeah. And she's doing her part, but, but well, I don't know how okay that... it is if she's not doesn't want to take care of them, right? So there's definitely still some she's That's carrying right. some yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, but the thing that a couple things that stood out were coming becoming bankrupt, like so she she's realizing how the the deficit I'll have it on her life when she has to do this. Yeah, you got to send them to a home and take care of that. Yeah, and... so you maybe you got to start looking into having them prepare for themselves to be able to be it some sort of insurance or, you know, there's these insurance plans that you could get that if people need to go to a home, it's covered. Right. Uh, things of that nature. I, I think it might be smart to start looking at that. Spend a little bit of the money now to save yourself money in the long run might be a good way to look at it. Um, yeah, I wonder why aren't there, why don't we know more about programs like that? Why isn't that being advertised or, yeah. you know, the fact that you and I can't resourcefully think of like a program yeah. Go to my parents again, old com. Like right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. got to be something. Yeah, that. Uh, oh, uh, there you go. Business doing. idea. Go. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that you like diapers and soft food, right? <laughs> let's let's get to work. <laughs> <laughs> let's start a pop up. Yeah. Um, I I I, I would probably say you know look you gotta it does all it only falls on you if you make it all fall on you as well right if your mm -hmm. brothers and sisters don't want to step up to the plate that's their prerogative. And if it's, you can only do what's going to be enough for you and you can't ruin your life. You've worked this hard, so don't ruin your life trying to take care of someone that you feel like hasn't taken care of you, I think is very important. Although they are your parents and that's hard to say out loud, it's even harder to think it, but it doesn't make you a shit person, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I agree with you. I wouldn't carry the weight. Yeah. Knowing that you're going to do the best you can to your capabilities, but also don't sacrifice Perfect. too much of yourself at the behest of doing something uh, that is going to uh, stretch the boundaries or limitations of what you can do. Yeah, who's judging to do the right thing here too? Like you, yeah, you're the you're the one who's judging yourself. So whatever you feel comfortable and right with is what that's the barometer. Um, you know, do what you can, but also remember to take care of your partner that's been there with you through thick and thin. Yeah take care of yourself and don't put yourself in a hole to take care of people that you feel like haven't taken care of you your whole life. Um, but also there was a, there was a tangent of the partner. I would hope that your partner isn't more offended than you are. Yes. I hope that your, your relationship with them sets the precedent and understand that behind closed doors, you can share things with somebody that is your partner. But these right? are, these but, are your parents. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but I, he's probably coming from a, or he or she's protective, coming, right? It's come from the angle of, of course. Yeah. You Who wouldn't want you to do that? But also, like in a partnership, you know, that's the, uh, if they go, if he, she goes bankrupt, they go bankrupt, right? So it's kind of like, yeah, he's keeping an eye on that for it. And I don't think there, you, I don't think you could find a parent in the world, a healthy minded parent in the world that would think, I'm going to bankrupt my child so that I can live in a better daycare. Yes, it's like, yes, no way. Yeah. No, I, I think that, you know, they made, the, they made their bed, they got to sleep in it. 100%. 
they did what they could, and I, I wouldn't take the onus or responsibility on if, you, especially if you can't afford it, right? Yeah, I mean that's. I would take take away the for me the biggest part to take away from this whole thing is the judgy part where you're saying I don't want to look like a shit. Well, don't who cares? You're the one who judges that. So do what right. you feel right and do what is not going to break every, the fir- You've come so far, so don't let yourself get pulled back into a place that's not right for no reason. Yeah. And the dynamic of the relationship is what you make it. Yeah. It is what she makes it with her parents. It is what she makes it with her significant other and 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 the and the siblings as well. Yeah. So I think it seems she, like the siblings are a non issue. It seems like the siblings have made their decision or are unable to help. So they're not even really part of the equation. Yeah. I, my heart goes out to you. It seems like a tough one. So much love to you, and, and and I hope that you're able to navigate these waters. They're not easy ones for sure. Yeah, Katie, it's it's definitely not easy, and my heart goes out to you. Uh, but uh, it sounds like you got a great head on your shoulders. Yeah. I think you're gonna find. I, I think you're gonna figure it out. But don't do it at the behest of of yourself. I think that's the main thing. I takeaway. really don't think so because, yeah. and I think, I think, you know, all the anxiety you're feeling goes into the relationship that you can foster with who you're with now, and yes be as happy as you can be because you certainly deserve it from everything we're picking up here. Yeah. Um, so I hope it helped. <laughs> I, I hope was, so. That's yeah. a tough one. That's a good one though. Okay. Here we go. It's coming from Sadie. Okay. This is right to the point. Right to the point. Sadie. This is what I like about Sadie. Lays it out. Minimal amount of words that you need. Yeah. Here it is. Mommy's hit me. No backstory. No backstory. You don't need it. You get it. You get it. You've been there. You guys are cool. You're cool. All right. I'm a single mom. Uh, any advice for a single mom, but also having a personal life? I need more backstory. <laughs> <laughs> I need more. I need more details to be able to answer this correctly. Uh, <laughs> uh, single mom who wants a personal life, and who wouldn't? And she seems like a young gal. Yeah. A single mom, sweet, personal life. Well, the first, the first thing about a single mom they have to think about is that you need somebody to help you. A personal life takes away the attention from where your responsibilities lie with your kid, right? Mm-hmm. So you need somebody that you could help you with the child or children, right? Yeah. You need either a trusted babysitter, nanny, family member, or somebody so you right. have the time to dedicate to a personal life. Yeah. I, I, look, as we're both parents, I think we completely know what you're going through because – for any individual to solely raise a child on their own, you need some downtime. 100%. You need a Friday off. You need a Saturday off. You need some me time. You need to go to the spa and just get, you know, have a spa day. You need something. But I'm, I'm sure, Sadie, you, you seem like a cool chick based off of what I saw. And uh, I'm sure you got a great core of friends. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what you're basing that on, though. You don't know what our friends are like. <laughs> You know, that, that part, that's an assumption, but I don't disagree. She seems really cool. Sadie, I'll be your friend. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There you go. The, your um, personal life is starting off. You already have two new friends. <laughs> you got uh, two new friends. But yeah, I, I, I agree with that. But I think the biggest thing is to make sure that you have the, the, the hardest part about the personal life is to be able to spend time and dedicate to it. And all your attention is on your child right now or children. So yeah, get the help there that you need. Care.com is great. What is this? Did you make that up? No, that's where we found our nanny. Oh, really? Back in the day. Yeah, it's great. Oh, okay. User reviews and whatnot and stuff. You need a good babysitter. You set your prices and everything. It's nice. Oh, so you set your own price. Yeah. It's like eBay <laughs> for nannies. <laughs> and you're going to get what you pay for, Sadie. Yeah, be careful. So be careful. Be careful there. Yeah. 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 But Bump it up if she's a single dollar. mom, yeah. she probably needs a little help on that area as well. So I think friends and family come into play on that. Yeah. And when it comes um, to dating with a personal life, I mean, I've always found that it's... It's especially now. I think it's way more out there that people have kids and are dating. Like it isn't as it's a lot more acceptable. acceptable yeah. right? It was. It doesn't have that uh, you know taint that it used to. And I, I think just put it out there when you're comfortable saying it. You know. Yeah. Came out of the gates hot. Say yeah. I'm yeah. Looking, you know, I'm looking for someone to help me raise. I my got children. a kid. And I need help. <laughs> That's whatever. Should scare off anybody. Yeah, yeah. it should be fine. <laughs> Uh, no, I think if you get some help to be able to dedicate some time for your personal life, and personal life can mean anything from, like Steve said, taking your time to some time for yourself or going out with friends or going on dates. So Yeah. Whiskey helps. Don't forget the whiskey. Okay. This is coming to us from Omar. Uh, I'm first... looking for a single mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we? Wow. Here we go. First of all, uh, this is a great pod. Love your chemistry. Thank you, Omar. That's very kind of you. I always thought you and I had great chemistry too, Omar. Mm-hmm. We've always said that. I I just wish you would buck up sometimes. Uh, Secondly, I'm going through a tough breakup after a relationship of six years, which left me broken and less confident and with a lot of anxiety. The relationship, not the breakup, did this to me as I endured a lot of humiliating things. Anyways, we broke up 10 days ago, 
she was forcing a marriage, which I don't believe in. And last time we talked, she told me she is already in another relationship. Wow. <laughs> Any advice on how to deal with this as I still have to see her because of our work situation? I can't find anybody to talk to about this, and I'm really looking for your advice. Omar, don't be so desperate, okay? We're here for you. Relax. Mm -hmm. um, Take a breath, Ohms. I'm going to tell you right now, anybody that dips out of a relationship and 10 days ago is in one now. Is in one now? Here's the good news. Ready? It ain't going to work out. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. And that tells you a lot about her. So think about this. He dodged a bullet. He dodged a big it's bullet. It's a straight up matrix up in here. Yeah. This is Omar. <laughs> Z Z Z Z Z Z Z you ain't Z doing that. Ohms. <laughs> Marmar, Mar, listen, I think you need Mar, Mar. I, I think you need to remember uh, you, you say you have anxiety from the situation and everything that you've endured. From the breakup, not the relationship. From because the, he said there were some humiliating no, things. No, from the relationship, he, not the breakup, right? From the relationship, not the breakup. He said he had to endure some humiliating things. As I endured things. a lot of humiliating, uh, a lot of anxiety of the relationship. With a lot of... And with a lot of anxiety, the relationship, not the breakup did this to me. You're correct. Right. Yeah. So Sorry. then the thing I would say is, like, all this stuff is gone now, right? Yeah. Here you go, Omar. You're here, baby. That's it. Yeah. You clean the slate. Right. You wipe the slate clean. You're 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 free to do whatever you want right. now. And, and I hear what you're saying, that you have to work with her because of work situation, but don't forget she has to work with you. Yeah. Don't ever put somebody else in the power position of where you have, they have to, you, whenever you have to see someone, they have to see you too. Right. So you get to define that together. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that, that's a, that's a big part of it. I'm, I'm going through a lot of that now where, you know, of course I'm going to have to be in a lot of situations together uh, with my ex and it's the easiest way to do is just both be aware that of the situation and look, you cared for each other at one point. So hopefully it's not just heartless, you know, yeah. six years is a long time. It's a long time, but you, know? you, you even just reading this humiliation, yeah, you know, whatever, it, it just like, that doesn't sound like a great relationship. Yeah, it seems like and if you, she's forcing marriage on you, yeah, it's like, yeah, nobody Omar, wants to what I want you, honestly, what you do here is reread this and realize to how yourself. lucky you are that you're out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, to me, I feel like you're a champion in this situation, Omar. And if you could, just like send her a picture of her to just <laughs> see what she looks like. Just so I, just so I could, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter no, why. I, be, this just, is the process on Two Cool Moms. Yeah, it is the process. We need to fully vet this. <laughs> and if it. there's any uh, like vacation trips, like somewhere hot on a beach or something like that, it's like, send Next us to Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, yeah. Good luck, Omar, though. I mean, I f honestly feel like yeah, your life's about to get better. <laughs> I do too. I know yeah. it sucks at the beginning of course. when you're licking your wounds. But also, I, I thought about this when you were talking. Like, do what's best for you. Do what makes you happy. Because at the end of the day, if you're with somebody or you were with somebody that cares about you, everybody always says the same thing. I just want the best for you. Yeah. I want you to be happy. And if you do, if you make decisions that make yourself happy, you don't have to worry about what that other person thinks or, or views you as because they're going, oh, he looks good. He looks happy. happy. I'm, I'm happy yeah, for him. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And Omar, I want you to be happy. That's all. That's all we all want, Marmar. That's right. So not only subscribe to this, but Comedy Pinion and my other company. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> You're plugging your other. I was joking. In the middle of this. I was this. joking. <sighs> I'm not tainting the waters. Was a, no, was it's fine. There's a lot of reaching for uh, Sullivan and Son seasons one and two are available <laughs> on Amazon. The opening act you can get on video demand as well. Uh, it's 82% of one demand. <laughs> right. Uh, all, all nine, eight seasons. Uh, okay, oh, here we go. Don't worry about me. They know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, yeah, yeah. This is coming to us from Ryan. Okay. Ryan. Uh, Hi, mommies. I'm Ryan. I'm 17, going to be 18 soon. And my question is I know this girl I liked for a bit, but she would always ghost me when she's with someone new. And then when they break up, she comes back to me yep. and I get blindsided. I need help. How can I get it to stop? Ryan, you ride this train out and be there for as much as you can. <laughs> Because every few months, every few months, it's like a season changing. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to get a handy, okay? Yeah. You're, you're, the handy, the handies is, are in the wind, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> There's a handy in the wind. The Steve Burns story. <laughs> <laughs> How I got to Hollywood. Um, but, it, no, she's young, he's young. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. So I don't, I don't even really see the complaint here. Like he's saying he wants more. Is that what she's, we're supposed to? She's using him as a crutch every time yeah. a guy dumps her. She comes, yeah. she comes back to him. Right. So is it a problem because he wants it to be a real thing with him and her? That's the question. That's not. That's. I know that's not. Hold on. No oh wait, wait. Uh, so my question is, I know this girl I liked for a bit. 
but she would always ghost me. So he liked her for a bit. bit. Okay, I don't think he likes her anymore. He doesn't like her anymore. Um, okay, so you have a decision to make clearly. Like, are you going to be there? It's it's a simple question. Are you going to pick up the phone? Are you going to reply to the text? Yeah. That's it. And it's the answer your... is at 18, the answer is yes. Yeah, yes, you <laughs> it's are. true. True. Because we all. Yeah. It's in your, it really literally is in your hands though, because you're saying she comes back to you, right? Yeah. So if you allow her to come back to you, just like anything in life, if you allow people to be in your life, they'll be in your life. So if you allow yeah. her to come back in, if she's done Casper the friendly in you, and then you're back. Yeah. Um, you're every time you pick up the phone, you're letting her know that's okay. Hundred percent. That's essentially. Look at what, that. Look at that, Stevie. Very good. That's it. That that is the approval she's looking for. Yeah. Yeah. You could and, also just have a conversation about it if you want to take it the next level. Be like, look, it's clearly not working out with these other people. We have a good time together. Do we just want to date? If that's sure. what you want, be upfront. Sure. Yeah. Be assertive. But maybe he's also being a he's just being a good friend. Yeah. And there's nothing <clears throat> wrong with that too. As long as so, are you reading it that he and her are hooking up, or they're not? I I, I was joking they're, that if, they're hooking up. If they're not, then it's a different thing. She comes back to me, and I get blindsided. Comes back to me, meaning there's something. There's happened. something happening because I think if he's that's blindsided be emotionally, he's yes. starting to get invested again. So, uh, yeah, the devil's always in the details, Joe. So that's right. Correct. I would say obviously you don't want to be blindsided. So I think to your point. Have the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, should we do this? Cars on the table. Do we not? Because yeah. I don't think it's fair to his own stability. You shouldn't be doing that. I've also never seen the movie Blindside. And Great it's been film. on my list for a while. Great film about, um, you know, People. people. It's not about race, Joe. It's a people movie. It's about people. Sandy B, man. I love her. Oh, my God. She makes great. bangers. She, her la What was the last one? The Lost Island? The Lost Island. With great. The, yeah. Loved it. Sandy the Billy proposal, was... her and Ryan Reynolds. That was, oh, great. that was a great one. Yeah, that was really good. And by the way, still rocking. Love How old her. is she? Love her. Like seventy three. She's great. She's I, still... I have also, you know what I love seeing her is her uh, talk show appearances too. She's always. We are really such two moms right now. We're talking about Sandra Bullock. Oh, <laughs> well, I love it. Where do we stop? I know it's very true. Very true. No, I've never seen The Blind Side, so that's just a note for myself to remind. You've never seen that movie? No. Her her most popular I know, film of crazy? all time. Yeah, I haven't. Why? I don't want to get into it here, but I have my reasons. That's, I why, never got, that's, I, that's why I was selling him the movie about people because he gets hung up on race I never, a lot, and it's listen, uncomfortable. What's your favorite race? What's your favorite race? Um, the Human. Mine's a New York City Marathon. Stop being so racist. <laughs> we both had good questions. <laughs> we both had good answers to that. Okay. The Human. Best to you, Ryan. We uh we hope it all works. Yeah, out. I hope I hope a handy's in the wind. <laughs> and he's in the wind okay here we go uh thanks for the podcast brings me give giggles and informative advice uh anyway jj my sweet shih tzu bulldog was abused before i adopted him when he was four so it's always been hard to get him groomed because he becomes aggressive but i made it work in the past one night jj went to sleep with the ability to see and he woke up fully blind uh, he was traumatized for three days and then adapted. He still walks into walls like a pinball machine, but he walks so slow that it doesn't hurt him. The problem is since he can't see, he gets even more scared and anxious with groomers and aggressive, but he needs to be groomed. His hair is starting to mat. What do I do? Are there specialized groomers that can work with a blind and aggressive dog? Yes. I'm in a real pickle. Yeah, there's specialized so there are? people that could do that. Seriously. But, uh, but also a good thing that people have done, I've got two or three that are like that right now. i got Rigatoni, who's only really responds to me. And we take her, and we just, just literally last week this happened mm. to the groomer, and I sat and just kept talking to the dog. Oh wow, really? As they're getting groomed, and just start, you know kept petting and being there. So you're probably most likely for the first one, or maybe going to have to be there. But there are specialized groomers that do that. There's also specialized tools. They have these gloves that they could wear and stuff. So if they get nipped, it won't break and stuff like that. But I think your voice has becomes the main thing now. Your voice and your smell. Um, for the dogs is going to be the two big things. For you. So That's don't shower for like three days. Right. You want to become... Skank it up. Right. And you want to get groomed at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get a two-for-one coupon. You want to get the promo code, <laughs> stanky doggy mommy. And you want to use, and you want to use that. But I, I, I think your voice and letting that dog know you're around in different ways takes precedence. Now, I had, I've had and have so many blind dogs, and it's amazing how they're just fine with it. Really? Yeah, they just use their nose and ears, and they're they're good. I've had I've had blind and deaf dogs that still just with their nose are able to get around. It's amazing. So as long as they have that, I think you're fine. So just make sure that you keep the dog comfortable, and I would suggest being around if the dog is comfortable with you for the first grooming, and then also looking to somebody 
be 100% upfront with your groomer. You don't want that groomer getting a bit thinking they're just coming sure, into her. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, you you couldn't have asked a better person. I have nothing to add because that's that's your that's that's spot. where I go. I mean, you come to this mommy for that. That's right. Yeah. Come to mommy for right. Talk, if talk we're going to talk about dogs. right, we're going to talk about hockey, or <laughs> we're going to talk about or bad food or, or bad Arby's food. or Arby's. We got the meats. Yeah, the meats. All right. About. This is from Chris Elliott. Uh, the Chris Elliott. I wish. Yeah, God, so I love cool. him. Uh, hi, mommies. My wife is pregnant with a third child due in July. With her second, I really suffered with depression and suicidal thoughts. I couldn't bond with him and found the whole new baby thing difficult. We're best buddies now, though after a lot of work. I'm terrified that it's going to happen again. It will affect my relationship with my wife and my kids. Any advice on what I can do to prepare myself in case it all happens again? I would say, Chris... You already have all the tools because you did it once. Accept it. It's going to happen, first of all. Think but, that. And then, yes, you've got through it once successfully, and you have right. a little buddy. So that's just part of your process. Yeah. You know? So I see what you're saying, but also going through something the second time is never as bad as going through it the first. That's right. No it, matter what. By the way, it's, 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 it's exactly like having a first kid and a second kid. Yeah. Because remember the first kid? Everything is kid gloves. Oh my God. The second kid, yep. everybody says it's just like, all right, yeah, yeah you're good. fine. Mm -hmm. You don't pay as much attention to the second child in terms of like, because a lot of your questions are answered. Your questions are answered. You, you there's have... a lot more security with it. Yeah. yeah. So I think the fact that you did the work on the second child, now you know the roadmap. Your third child, I think, is going to be a lot easier than yeah. you anticipate. I, I always say this, too. like to, The biggest bullshit advice I always got and heard people say and I never gave was, oh, you're going to see that child your whole life's going to change. You're going to love that. I didn't like my daughter or son for, like, the first two years. Really? Like, didn't even, like, they didn't do anything for you. They didn't, first of all, they, they don't need their fathers. They're all about their moms in the first year of their life. That's, they, they, it's nice to be there. you got to be there to help to support the mom. And I'm a right. firm believer in that. Like, you have to be, like as a support system to help the family operate. Sure. And it takes a while for you to attach to the kid. So I think the biggest stigma out there is that when people don't feel that attachment that's so advertised, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen for everybody. It doesn't happen right. for a lot of people. I love my kids more than anything. My kids love me. I'm their world. It happened. Right. It just doesn't happen like, oh, here's a kid. Oh, that's mine. I love it. Yeah, you know, first me, of all, you're like, what the hell is this thing? You're holding it. His neck is doing this. Shit. You don't know what's going on. You, yeah. can't, you can't do things with it. You yeah. know, it's crying. You don't know why. Shitting. Yeah, you all pissing. this stuff. So I, I think that's a big part of it, it's expectation. So you've already got the expectation that it's going to suck, right? So maybe it won't. Yeah, it is true, yeah. But my kids and I instantly gelled. They they sensed an alpha presence around me constantly and just thought, this is someone i got to look up to. And they knew. Well, that's they knew. That's because you kept stepping their butts. So I was like, what is he doing? They knew right away. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, you know, some dads have that. Some dads have a connection with their kid right away. Yeah. But you did honestly connect right away with both of them? I did, yeah. Yeah. I really did. I, I, I just thought, you know, it was like all the, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just instantly felt, you know, a, a, a deep bond with them. And it was this great. here is the perfect example. That's right. Two dads with two totally different experiences. Well, two moms with two different experiences. Exactly. Let's stay on brand. That's right. It's right there. You're right. The Hold on. <laughs> You're right. Did your back hurt when you were carrying those children? Oh, my sciatica. Uh, <laughs> I... I yeah, I, I, it's per, it's exactly right here. Sometimes it's going to suck, and sometimes it's not. I hope for you for the third one, it's yeah. more like the first one where you enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, he didn't mention the first one, right? So you don't know, but I would assume oh. maybe he did. Maybe that's but, just his, maybe it's just his bag. Maybe he just hates having kids, but it takes a couple of years, and then boom, he loves them. Have you looked into blind dogs <laughs> by any chance? Uh, if you're going to groom these kids, it's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that uh, that it, it sounds like he did the work with the second one. They're in a great place right now. Hopefully, that's the launching pad. But the one thing I, you know, the one thing that he mentioned is, in this podcast is like, I'm worried it's going to happen again. It's it's just like whenever we travel, right? Yeah. I mean, this the circumstances are different, but. You can't worry about things you're not in control of. Yes. Why drive yourself crazy with this stuff? So I love the I love the saying, worry is a wasted emotion. Completely. You can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about it. So stop worrying about right. it. And will you call my wife and, and reiterate that to her again? Because she constantly worries about things. <laughs> she worries about you though. Oh my God. Does she ever? So do I. <laughs> Somebody's gotta. Because <laughs> you don't worry about yourself. I don't worry about anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. No, but I, uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Congratulations! Well, congratulations by the way, too on that. the third bun in the oven. That's great. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna be so much fun to look forward. Imagine to. Imagine it goes the I, other way. Like he comes out, he's like super connected to this child. He's like, oh my god! He like, starts hating the other two kids. 
<laughs> He's like, this he is leaves my his wife and kids just to be with the kid. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this one. You keep those two. <laughs> Good trade off. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> this is from Timothy. How, oh, here we go. I just lost it. Sorry. Howdy. 21 years old. Relationships have have been talked about a lot already, so I don't know what can be said differently. I've struggled getting over a breakup for the last year and a half after mm -hmm. a not-so-great time of being off and on with her about for about four and a half years. I didn't treat her that great, nor did I ever treat anyone I was uh, with before that great. Unfortunately, it took losing her uh, for good for me to snap into reality, but it's eaten away at me more than helped me. How do I get over this constant feeling of upset over the person I was in the past? I thought I should finally give in and see my therapist, but my favorite cool mom, Joe Gatto, sounds like more of a fun idea. <laughs> I'm no therapist. Um, I will. I think, I, go ahead. This is something I think every guy has at some point, right? You, you, you when you're younger, which he is, mm -hmm. or or older, or older. Yeah, yeah. there's no you limitations on that. That's right. But yeah. you, you were in situations where you were with somebody that wasn't right at the time and it was because of you and it's your fault but guess what you you botched it you fucked it up that's your lesson it's not theirs to that person has moved on and i think that person has recalibrated what's right for them what's wrong for them and what is acceptable or not and that person hopefully is happy but you can't carry that burden right. constantly you you need to take that into the next relationship and be better I think in your next one and there are you, you can look back on the on the people you heard or whatever and hopefully you know I don't know if you feel like sending a text or whatever yeah. it's not going to do anything to them though because they're they're not great awesome I'm I've moved on, on with my yeah. life who gives a shit I yeah. don't th I, th I think it's more about a self-forgiveness here than anything with with that with that person because in fair relationships the only thing you can do is walk away with a lesson and if you don't learn a lesson from that stuff it feels like everything is for nothing right right and he's accountable for his lesson yeah, which and is he good said he knows that's that. another part that's, of it too if you're not accountable of, right and he, he's carrying the guilt you got to stop carrying the guilt yeah is my if if you've learned from it yeah. you could feel guilty to a point but if you've learned from it and you feel like you're going to not bring if you're going to leave that behind and you start your new relationship that's important right mm -hmm. So there's things that I've done in a relationship that I was like, oh, I look back on it and I'm like, oh, that's fucking stupid. I shouldn't have done that. Or uh, I should have treated this person better or thought, uh, put them first is a big mm -hmm. thing. And you don't. So now that's over with and you'll have the opportunity to do that again. So don't make the same mistakes. And that's yeah. all you could do. You can't beat yourself up over it because there's no going back to fix that. That's it's in the done. rear view. It's done. Yeah. You know, um, you know, that pothole's in the road, as they say. You can just be a better person. That's right. Yeah. That's why I say if you don't learn from it, then you're just, you're messing up t twice. Right. Right. You've messed it up and then you're not becoming better for it. Yeah. So you need to, you need to, and it seems like he understands that he needs to be better for it and will do that going forward. Um, so that's, that's probably the best advice is that, look, you've messed up, you've admitted it, you do your penance and you forgive yourself. And you have to forgive yourself because if you don't, all you're going to do is just be miserable for no reason because you're the only one that's holding that over your head now. This other person's probably moved on to something mm -hmm. else, like you said. Do something good for somebody. Yeah. You know, that's a small incremental way to get out of it. By the way, I've never gotten a phone call from a girl that said, hey, I'm sorry I treated you like shit. Never. And there's a lot of girls that are treated like that. <laughs> so I'm waiting. I'm waiting. My phone number's not changed for the last 20 years, girls. Waiting where, on you. Where are all of and you? And by the way, if it happened, I'd be like, great. I'll go. It, it, like, it wouldn't make any difference yeah, to me. because it doesn't seem like you're carrying it. it. Do you want to speak to someone directly in here? Yeah. <laughs> you know Talk you to are. Me, Melissa. <laughs> you corn fed. I'm not going to say um, No. But even if, you know what I mean? I, I, I think. Yeah. In the past, I probably made those phone calls like, hey, I'm really sorry. I, I was everybody I was kind of, has. Yeah. Everybody has, you know, yeah. to different levels, of course. But, you know, yeah. things happen and this is the, you know, you got to go day by day. You got to go on. So, yeah, I, I'm sorry I asked you to cover up that murder with me. It's like we were in Mexico. It's like this is where this stuff happens. I told you, now fine. we have a story. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Mexico. I love that. Like, what do you want? And then me? we got the extra day in Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you worried about? Oh, you mean somebody else is talking about? Oh, that's right. The other friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Joe>. <laughs> Don't edit this out. <laughs> keep this in. We'll keep this part in. All right. You know? What you want? You want one more? Allie. Okay. I'm getting married in a few weeks, and my future mother-in-law 
will not show me the dress she's wearing. She's bought eight dresses for the wedding. We are getting married in my parents' backyard. It's a very casual wedding. How do I politely ask her if she has a decision and what her dress will look like? Why does this bother you so much? Why is why is your wedding day about what your mother in law is gonna yeah. wear? She's not gonna wear white. <laughs> Let it go. And Allie, it's in a backyard. Allie, you're relaxing. Who it's cares? a, it's a sure barbecue. It's a, you're sure having a, a great time. But oh. yeah. Don't don't let that weigh on you. Oh, this please. is your day. You're your center stage. You got the spotlight on you, honey. I would I would, I would say, Allie, you need to not worry about it because yeah. you're not gonna start a fight with your mother in law about you need to show me your dress. By oh, the way, what mother in law yeah. buys eight dresses? Oh, this one. <laughs> so good luck. Good luck to you, Allie. Good luck That's right, to you. yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. I say enjoy your wedding day. Yeah. yeah. You got enough to worry about the DJ. It might rain. It's going to be an outdoor party, right? Uh, you know, the food things, is yeah. going to suck. You know, is he going to show up? Oh, I'm really just making her nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Allie. Sorry about that. It'll all be fine. Yeah, but you're wearing a wedding dress. Like, yeah. I understand, girls. I, I know there's, like, uniformity to it all, and you want everything to match and blend or whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, all that matters is that you got a ring. The experience is going to be great. You're going to have such a fun time. Everybody you care about is going to be there. Right. They're all there to celebrate you and this wonderful relationship. And then you and your husband are off to the races. There you go. It's going to be great. And yeah. what is she What is she going to wear, you know? When you go next? to Cracker Barrel yeah. on <laughs> Monday. It's like, who gives Are you going to ask her to show you yeah. her, her pantsuit? <laughs> <laughs> Which probably, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, congratulations is really what we're saying. Yeah, Allie, congratulations. Uh, I think... To Joe's point, you got so many other yeah. things to worry about. I, how great will it be when Allie's mother-in-law shows up in her exact <laughs> wedding gown? <laughs> She's like, I didn't know you were going to wear that. By the way, I did this uh, reality show on NBC called The Real Wedding Crashers. This it lasted for a season. And it was punk, but with weddings. Mm -hmm. And we did that. But the bride and groom are in on the whole thing. So the whole week they're in Vegas, we're pulling pranks on them and stuff. And Catherine Reitman, who's on a great show called Working Moms, she wore the exact same dress that the bride wore to the wedding. And she had to be escorted out of the wedding because it was the it was the one time we had to have like security. Right. People got ready. vicious. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. All right, so I hope that doesn't happen to your mother-in-law. Nope. No, 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 <laughs> not gonna happen to you, Allie. Yeah, well, thank you so much guys for listening. We love you. Um, you know, you're a cool mom, Steve. Joe, you are the coolest mom. I think it should be called one coolest mom and the other and the other mom. Who's pretty cool too? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a long okay. title. Yeah. <laughs> These two cool mommies love you, so show us some love. Please rate us, review us, follow us on all social media, and subscribe to our YouTube.